Good evening, I'm Marty Olson, and welcome to City Focus. And tonight I've got uh, three very special guests, and I'm very, very excited about our program this evening. And as we veer off of uh, the political agenda, and we get involved with uh, our schools and uh, after-school programs, and I think good stuff, and we got a couple of young fellows here as guests as well. To my immediate left is Riona Dice, and Riona is the executive director of the Drop-In Learning Center, and she's been at that job now for how long, Riona? Oh, 16 years. 16 cool. years. Yes. Uh, she uh, began her career as a Reading is Fundamental uh, Teen Life Coordinator, and uh, she's also uh, been involved with Camp Rotary and former Writer's Block board member, former secretary for the New London branch of the NAACP, and uh, current advisor for the Linwood Bland NAACP Youth Council uh, since 2005. She's a mother of three and lives in New London. And her lifetime goal is to empower youth and their families. So part of that empowerment is here this evening. Yes. And uh, across the table from Riona and I are two brothers. Uh, we've got uh, Ramon and Azale Morales. And Ramon's a fifth grader at Nathan Hale School. And his brother yes. is a seventh grader at the Isaac School. So you're a middle school student. Yes. And uh, the Nathan Hill School, as I know it, is uh, under construction behind my house <laughs> yes. off Ocean Avenue. And uh, so you, you're uh, currently located where? Harbor School? Is that where they have you? Yes. We are at Harbor School right across from the Memorial Hospital. Yeah, Lawrence Memorial. Yeah. Very good. Well, welcome to all of you, and I'm uh, looking forward to an invigorating program. And uh, as always, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're live tonight, mm -hmm. and you can reach us at 860-440-3154 or at 800-253-2285 if you have any uh, questions or thoughts or comments on the program this evening and what's going on uh, in New London. So, uh, Riona, let's start with you. Okay. and. Uh, why don't you kind of give us a little overview of what uh, the Drop-In Learning Center is and what you do and what, what's the mission of the, of the center? Wow. Well, the Drop-In Learning Center has been, uh, is going to celebrate its 42nd um, year of service serving um, Southeastern Connecticut. We are before, after school, preschool, summer enrichment, basically out of school time. We're an agency that adapt to our community. So just think about the needs of our community. A lot of our families are in need of after school programming because they work in these hours and they want to make sure that their kids are getting their homework done, have a safe place and opportunity to do other things. But not only do we provide um, care for for the youth in the, um, our community, we're also a resource center. So we are kids in distress. That means we get new clothing that we give out to other agencies that provide services in our community. <laughs> we also are a diaper bank. But basically, our goal is to encourage lifelong learning for our youth and their family. That is our mission. mission. So all our activities that we do at the center um, circle around that particular um, aspect. But we also have preschools there. So we have kids as young as three years old, and then we're there for the local colleges. So they get their service learning opportunity there. Um, high school students get a chance to come in and do their community service learning. So basically, we're there to support the community. Super. Now, <laughs> where's the uh, center located? Well, we are located at 45 Broad Street, which is in back of Second Congregational Church. And what is so awesome about it, Second Congregational Church is almost like the center of New London. You ever drive down Broad Street and you see this big church? We're right behind there. Very good. And is there a uh, capacity for the amount of youth that you can serve, or is it open-ended? Well, believe it or not, we are licensed for 99 students. That is with our school age and our preschool program. but. Thanks to Second Congregational Church, they allow us to use the upstairs auditorium to serve the middle school students. So when we expand, we have that particular um, component. And so we, are, we do have a capacity of just 99 students for that age group, but then we provide other opportunity at different hours. So the NAACP um, youth group, they meet, they meet there um, during the evening hours twice a month. 
um, between 5.30 and 7 o'clock. And then we also give support to other, um, to foster care support group. They meet at the center as well. Um, so we pretty much try to do a, um, we're open many hours during the day. But for our licensed facility, we are only licensed for 99. But for our school age, we are um, able to at least serve 30 to 45 students there at that site. And are you open on the weekends as well? We provide certain services depending on funding and opportunities. So, good example, last week um, they, it was a football game at Southern University. We took some kids down there because um, we were able, matter of fact, I think they paid their own way that time. Yes. Um, they had to pay for the busing, but they actually got into the game free. So that was an opportunity for them to visit the school. And one of my counselors, he's a junior there, so we had a chance to watch him play. He came out, talked to some of the students. So he had a chance to see students that he worked with. Yeah, Tyrell Robinson yeah. had a chance to see students he worked with, but he was at that time, I mean, I had Tyrell since, I want to think, sixth grade. It's, it's, it's uh, Southern Connecticut State yes. down in New Haven? Yes. Yeah, very good. Yes. So it depends on um, opportunities. Sometimes we partner with other local agencies, such as Kente. Um, they um, offer some tickets, I want to, th for different plays and different opportunities. So when things come up and somebody say, hey, we have this available and I know it could benefit our kids, of course we're going to go. So and it falls on the weekend sometimes. Sounds good. And uh, is there a cost to attend the Drop and Learning Center? You know, yes it is. At one time, the Drop and Learning Center was a free organization um, for um, after school. And we're talking about 1970, 1980. But nowadays, we have to go through licensing. You have to, your staff have to be fingerprinted, background checked. So it is a cost. The cost for after school program is $50 a week, but it is a sliding scale. And some families who's eligible can apply for care for kids. That would offset the cost. And the reason why we're able to do sliding scales because of foundations like the um, Palmer Foundation, Frank Luma Palmer Foundation. Then you have the community, um, the community foundation. Do you believe I can't even think of their name? The that, Northern Community Foundation. Thank you. So different organizations like that. And then sometimes people donate and want to see kids to, to go to another level. Just example, you talk about weekend program. In April last year, we took 23, 23 youth to Valentown for um, a peace retreat. And we did training on how to deal with conflict. So we were there for the whole weekend. And thanks to um, Ann Shriver, she reached out to local, um, she has a local group that's, uh, who ended up donating. And that's how that cost was offset. Then you had Kente, who also pitched in. And you had Office of Youth Affairs. And we had students from all of, um, from um, New London, Connecticut, which was great because it was, three different organizations getting together to provide training on how to deal with conflict. And it was ran by youth. We had um, the Providence um, Institute and Study in Nonviolence in Prov Providence, Rhode Island. They came down and they actually um, did the training with our youth on Saturday. So it was a um, six hour training, hands on interaction, interacting and, you know, interact active. So what do you think about all that, gentlemen? I think it was a really good thing that we did. Yeah. Now, let me ask you, you guys, uh, how uh, how long have you been attending the uh, the center? Well, I've been attending the center for about four years, but I've been with Ms. D for seven because we started off at the Faith Fellowship Church, and the program was Confident Kids. That was about when I was six years old. And I, so I've been with Ms. D for a long time, yeah. And, and, and how about you? I've been with Ms. D probably with as much as six years with the, at the Drop-In Learning Center. <coughs> Be, because my um Relax, you're, you're doing just fine. We're having a conversation here, just like we're at your kitchen table. 
Mm -hmm. Well, when they mention Confidence Kids, at one time we, the center ran Confident Kids, mm -hmm. held a faith fellowship. Then we had um, after school programs at Edgerton School, at Winthrop School, and at Jennings School. So we have been um, a part of the, our New London community in so many different ways. Yeah, I, I mean, I, my introduction to the center goes back years and years ago when, when Liz mm -hmm. Hamilton was the uh, executive director and. Uh, I'm sure you remember Liz. Yes, she was the one who hired me. She was the executive director for 30 years, and Ms. Hamilton was all about homework and making sure kids had an opportunity to be successful in school. And when you hear, or when I had the opportunity to meet other people who attended the Drop and Learn Center, that's one thing they always stress. She was always about where they report card, where they're at, making sure they had the things that they need to be successful in school. Mm -hmm. Now, our are you a, a United Way uh, agency? Oh, yes. We are a United Way agency. And you also get some funds from the city through the Air Block Grant? We, yes, we do. We do receive funding from um, New London Community Block Grant. And we really appreciate it because it take, when we talk about take a village, you got to think of the financial village. And everyone is a part of it, including our family. So we're all a part of this big pie to help make sure that our kids are getting the things that they need. Financially, and, and are all of the uh, youth that are served from New London, or do you serve other communities as well? We we usually get other community members doing the summer because these are people who work in New London, and they it's more convenient for them to bring their kids there because this is where they work at. Okay. <clears throat> now, gentlemen. Yes. I want to know, when you first started coming to the Drop and Learning Center, what, what, what were you doing? What, how old were you? And, and what has your evolution been uh, with the center? I mean, uh, you're, you're a young man now. You're not uh, a kid. So are you more of a mentor to the younger student kids? Or are you still there as a, uh, uh, are there adults keeping an eye on you? Or are you part of the adults keeping an eye on the kids? Well, I'm still a... I'm still a student at the Drop-In Learning Center, but often Ms. D has the middle school students go to the younger classrooms and help out, help them read or help the teachers, you know, keep the class in order so that, you know, it gives them a break and it gives us a sense of responsibility. You know, Ms. D always is telling me that I need to work behind the office so that I get more skills and that I have more, you know, of a chance to get a well-paying job. Super. And, and, and how about you? Are you uh, is it a place for you to do homework? Is it a place for quiet time? Are you working with little kids? Well, I sometimes do both because I like to finish my homework and do my reading so then it's better for me to have fluency in my school. But yes, I do help out in the younger grades like hmm, third grade and fourth grade because sometimes they need help on the math and the reading and they can't sometimes spell the words correctly, but yes. I Very good. Well, I, I, I like your proactive approach here. You've got these young men uh, moving forward in a very good, good direction here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I just want to remind you that we are live tonight, and we are taking phone calls, and we'd certainly be uh, uh, really excited to have some of you call in and uh, inquire and ask questions or offer some thoughts. Maybe some of you have uh, uh, attended the Drop and Learning Center. You can share some of your experiences with us. That would be kind of fun. Uh, and we can be reached at 860-440-3154 or at 800-253-2285. Um, what year are you in the Isaac School? Um, in 2010, I was in sixth grade. And um, I was still at the drop, but I, I didn't catch the bus like I did with, to go to Nathan Hale when I was in fifth grade. But I walked down the street because Isaac's only down the street on 190 Governor Boulevard. Mm -hmm. It's the old YMCA building. That's how I remember yeah. it. Uh, for you, it's the Isaac School. But uh, uh, and had a pool, but the pool fell down. Well, but I know I, I I learned to swim in that pool when I was a young young lad. Um, <clears throat> but my point is, are you in grade seven or eight right now? I'm in eighth. And. Um, so you've done your entire middle school experience at the Isaac School? Yes. Uh, will you be going to Isaac next year, or you're not sure? Mm, I, don't, I don't 
I might be, but I might not because my sister and I, my brother is going to be leaving to go to high school. Maybe I go out tech, so I don't know, but most likely because my sister is in the Isaac right now. So, right, so you've got family, it's a, you've extended families in the school, that's good. Yeah, because um, you can get automatically accepted if you have a relative there. That's why I was wondering if you were planning on attending with the with that link because uh, the Isaac School, I had a chance to tour the school last year uh, in my capacity as serving as mayor of the city and I was duly impressed with the uh, with the school and the, the program and uh, uh, the level of uh, academic performance that's happening at the Isaac School. I was really excited for what was happening there. So. Uh, uh, I'm almost in, more interested in what you've got to say tonight than uh, listen, having me babble for an hour. So be bold. And that's why I'm curious as to whether or not you're on a fast track to go to the, uh, to the school or whether or not you'll end up at Benny Dover. Um, and if you're moving to high school next year, whether you'll go to New London High or, or perhaps St. Bernard's or, or, or Grasso Tech. I mean, do you have any idea where you're headed next year or are you still I'm, thinking about it? I'm still thinking about it. And... My grandmother wants me to go to Grasso Tech and Groton, but I'm not sure what I want to go to. Recently, in my eighth grade seminar class, they have they introduced us to high school, and they and they they made us do a quiz online about what type of job category I would like best. Mm -hmm. And I and it came out the results that I was an enterpriser, mm. and yeah. And um, I the my second result was artistic, and my third I'm not sure, but anyways about the eighth grade seminar they tried to introduce us to high school and recently the St. Bernard School rep representatives and two former students of Isaac came by to tell us about the school and I was pretty interested in it. Mm. Very good. Well, your your both your level of enthusiasm gets me excited and gives me a little positive thought here that the, you know the young people. Uh, We've got a lot of good good kids. You know, we tend to read about the, uh, the kids that get into trouble, but it's the uh, there's a lot more good kids than uh, kids getting into trouble. I really and firmly believe that. So, uh, and you're a shining example of uh, a positive side of the equation. So thank, thank, you. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Eighth grade. And, 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 yeah. I, and I suspect oh. that, that that the guidance that you're getting down down at the drop in is. Uh, part of that uh, growth. We, we have an years. awesome team at the center, which is nice because it reflects the community, and they are people from our community. I'm still in shock that it's eighth grade. <laughs> I, I told uh, Mr. Austin that you were seventh grade. Oh. I didn't realize it was eighth grade because uh, you, as you think about how the kids have grown, um, we talk about community service. That's one of our components um, that the kids are required to do. So community service this year was um, the beautification of Riverside Park. Yes. We had a day that we went down there. Then they read to the kids at the center during the summer. Um, and this is our summer team program that was held at the Williams School this year. So when we came back, those were some of the things that we did at the, um, at the drop. But they also had to make Play-Doh. You know, you can't run out of Play-Doh. That's just, <laughs> you gotta have plenty of Play-Doh for the kids. So that's some of the things that they did. Um, it was a part of their science class. They had to actually make the Play-Doh and then, um, you know, make it for the kids so they can have throughout the summer. But oh, I'm still shocked. Eighth grade, my goodness. How about that? Huh? You're growing up right in front of our eyes here. You, uh, Didn't even realize it. Now, one thing that the uh, drop-in is, is very, very well known for, it has been for an extended period of time, is uh, it's reading its fundamental program. Oh. And uh, why don't you take a moment to kind of... Uh, <laughs> Discuss that and, and okay. kind of where it started and where it is today and how it got there and because uh, mm -hmm. uh, you're touching an awful lot of young people with, with that program. Well, it's, it's amazing that you say that because that's the program that I had the opportunity to start in. And so when I met Miss Hamilton, um, I was interviewing and she asked me, I had to read in front of her. I had to read a story as if I was talking to kids. So I ended up really getting excited about this opportunity. So when, um, when I was hired, I had to go to each school, read to the children, and then give them free books. So one of the things I explained to them, this is their book to keep forever and ever. And it was a great component where we had, you know, where I would go in, read a story, I would dress up, clowns, puppet shows, a little bit of everything. And then one of my favorites, um, 
my green eggs, green eggs and ham. Oh my goodness, Sam I am. And it's one of those stories when you read, you know, I do interaction where I get the kids involved and then, um, so it's call and response. And then they get, I get involved and we go back and forth. Well that program actually was only serving second and third grade in um, New London, then um, Groton and Norwich. Um, throughout the years, that program has grown tremendously to 10,000 kids. Now, because of funding cuts and so forth, and even nationally, RIF has, is going through some really um, serious changes. And we're still trying to figure out how the center fit in with this. But what has um, happened is that three times a year, we have over 30,000 books that actually go out to the community. We serve, like I said, New London, um, Groton, and Norwich, um, and also daycares. So it's one of those programs that I don't want to see in. It's a great opportunity, but everything changed and evolved to different things. So we're still filling out the pieces what RIF will look like this year. But the goal of Reading is Fundamental is to make lifelong learn, uh, life long readers. And how you do that is allowing a child to pick out a book that he, had, he or she would like to read. So it's great. It's one of those things where, I mean, just imagine picking out your own book. <laughs> well, I, uh, I think with what's been done and, and what it's doing through your agency uh, is, is fabulous. The uh, New London Kiwanis Club, which I'm a member of, uh, and when you talk about community service and giving back, that's a, a to me it's a wonderful avenue to do to do so. Um, but our club runs a reading is fundamental program. We read at for preschoolers at uh, three of uh, Balestrini's child care centers, mm -hmm. one in Waterford, uh, one in East Lyme, one in Salem. And we also read at Riverfront uh, Child Care over in Groton. And um, it's really, you know, you talk about developing literacy, the joy of reading, and perhaps most important for some of these kids is that uh, where maybe they're not getting this at home is ownership. Where they'll bring home a book that belongs mm -hmm. to them. And I think that that uh, is an important component as well. And uh, what we're doing with our club is certainly on a much smaller scale than what you're doing, but we're trying to, uh, again, uh, get young people engaged in reading. Because, I mean, if you can't read, it makes it very, very difficult to, uh, to achieve success in society. I mean, we want kids to give every opportunity to uh, achieve success in their adult life and be a good contributor uh, back to society and not be a, a drain in any way, shape, or form. Well, tell me about your school now. We're into school about a month, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yes. uh, what's cooking? What are you What are you taking? What What's fun? What's not fun? You got good teachers. Well, yes. Actually, my I have a I substitute. That answer. I just wanted you to say it. <laughs> I have a substitute for three weeks because my actual my actual teacher is she has a baby. And she wants to like spend time with her baby because that's the first baby. But right now, right now, in our topic of what we're learning in math, we are learning about decimals, and we are in we are in reading. We are learning about social study, or social study, science, and curricul curricular activities, and that you can do when well. I mean that. Okay. Something so So you're enjoying that, huh? Yeah. Yes. Very good. And what's uh, what's on your agenda at school? Um, it's nothing really different. You know, I've been at the same school for three years. It's nothing much changed. Same teachers. I'm kind of used to the to the schedule. Um, I'm. I guess one thing that's changed that is the fact that I'm about to go into high school. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm not excited, but I'm not. You know. Like, ah, oh, it's a bummer, you know. But I'm, I just don't know how to feel because I can't believe I'm going there already. Well, you know, what's interesting here is you're transitioning. Right now, as an eighth grader, you're the, uh, you're the big fish in the pond here. You're the big kid. And uh, a year from now, when you move into high school, you'll be, be the, the little kid the, again. The little, little kid again, that's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, how, you, how you handle that and, uh, and your level of maturity and your confidence, and uh, at least based on this... Uh, introduction here this afternoon, uh, I think you should succeed quite well. You seem to be a very uh, cool, calm, and collected young man here, and uh, uh, a presence about you that I really enjoy. Thank you. 
And uh, I think you'll be uh, getting yourself ready for entering into middle school uh, as well. And I think you'll do, you'll do well, too. Thank you. Now, have both you guys grown up here in New London? I mean, yes. You're, you're yes. born here and you're... Yeah. Uh, that's yes. neat. Me, too. How about you? What's your claim to I am from Detroit, Michigan. And she admits that. Of course I miss that. I'm very proud of being from Detroit. Um, um, so, yes, Detroit is my hometown, but it's amazing. I've been, um, oh, goodness, I've been here for 24 years in Connecticut. And so I've been actually working at the drop for 16 years. And the last two, I guess the last three years, I've been living in New London. So I've always been a part of New London, at least for the last 16 years, just by working here um, in New London. But um, now I'm actually living here, mm -hmm. part of it. So I guess I'm a, um, a whaler if somebody adopt me. Well, <laughs> I think we've adopted her. Don't you think so, guys? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> She's okay. We'll keep her. I said her a whaler myself. <laughs> yeah. But you, you were talking about um, the transition going to high school, and one of the things that we teach at the center is that your high school choice, the choice that you decide for your high school is very important because you have to think about what you want to be when you grow up and how this high school is going to impact you and where you need to go. So I'm very excited that they had visitors come to, um, to your school to talk about the various high schools. So that's outstanding. So I hope that that's also being done at Benny Dover because that's very important. Because you don't want to just go to a school because you have to go there. You know, it's nice to have choices. And to make sure you have choices, you need to go out there and look and make sure you apply for the different schools and really weigh them out and see what is best for you. Yeah, I mean, one thing that, you know, you should keep in mind that I'm sure your parents uh, work with you on this as well is the uh, when you're through with high school is whether or not you're going to want to continue and perhaps go to college and what you're going to want to study post high school and that you're preparing yourself to do that and that you do the best you can in school get good grades and uh, uh, try to enhance your your uh, transcript uh, either you young men involved with uh, athletics or sports or music or what, what, what do you do when you're outside of school? Well, I'm not, I don't play sports on the team, but I do like to play sports. But um, outside of school, I don't do much. You know, t usually I go home. On the weekends, I go to my father's house. But I don't do much. I don't do much. You, you love to read. <laughs> you open yourself oh, up to me. a whole new world. And it's because it, it, it's very important that they realize what they do, even, even though they, if they don't play sports, okay, you play an instrument. You but still play at school. You feel it at school, but that opened up so many different opportunities for you because you don't know if that's going to be, you know, scholarship money. You, you, may, you never know. And that's what we want to encourage our kids to always have options. But one of the things, if you don't mind me sharing, can I say this? Yes. Because he loves to read. This gentleman comes in and he has different stuff that he likes to read about different books. And that is so exciting for me to see a young man coming in and love to read. And it's important that um, our kids, our younger ones, see that and know that. Because I hear about kids, oh, I don't like reading. But it's so awesome when a young man says, you know what, I like to read. And this is the book I'm working on now. That's how it is. And, you know, so it's important <laughs> for that to happen. And I like to, you know, could encourage you to encourage you to continue doing that. But don't be shy about it, because you don't know what doors that's going to open up. Right? And in case you didn't know, he writes, too. <laughs> well, you did. Well, is there, is, there, is there a particular topic that you like to read about, or is there a particular genre that you just, enjoy? If, if it's interesting, I'll give it a try. If it looks interesting, I'll give it a try. I just like to read. <clears throat> and, uh, short stories, or novels, or poetry, or? Um, would a novel be considered like a chapter book? Yeah. Yeah. What was the last book you read? Well, I'm not sure, but currently I'm reading um, Letters to a Young Brother by Hill Harper. Very good. Are you, are you a, 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 an engaged reader as well? Or, well. or do you, are, are you more athletic? Or what, what do you like to do when you're, when you're not in school? Sometimes I like to finish the, like if I have probably a chapter, one more chapter in a book that I have, and it's the weekend, and I read it, and I'm bored, especially. 
Um, I would read the last chapter, and most of the time I read the Magic Tree House. I I read probably up to book forty three, and they came out with book forty five. So, yeah. A large collection of reading material that you have. I remember when you used to come in with backpacks full of books that you started on this one, you're working on this oh, yeah. one, and this is your favorite. So, I mean, just, I, I know you're looking like, how she remember that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's certain things that you notice about um, the, you, you, you have the opportunity to work with. Yeah. You know, one, one thing I, I'd like to just throw out for <laughs> discussion purposes, because uh, I'm really impressed with you two young fellows here. I'm, uh, Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm excited. Uh, and that is, I don't know if you're aware or not, but New London has got a variety of, I think, very interesting uh, historical sites within our six square miles. Uh, perhaps they're not the kind of things that people would come to New London just to go to one of them. But if we were to package it, all these different things, you could spend a half a day to a day. Most of them are within walking distance. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, they're within walking distance of the Drop-In Learning Center. Yes, they are. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with these or not. And it might be something that would be kind of fun, and maybe I might want to extend a little bit of a challenge to you as uh, leaders sure. in, your, in, in, in the uh, center to maybe try to put something together here, a little walking tour of New London. And that would encompass getting the kids together, getting some adult supervision, working with the different places to make sure that they're going to be open, and they'll be ready for you. Um, but for instance, have uh, either of you been to the, uh, the the old mill under the bridge? No. No. You've heard of it? Yes, I heard of it, yeah. But you haven't been there yet? No. Okay, no. well, that's a place that you might want to visit. And that just goes back, uh, boy, that's one of the oldest buildings still standing in New London. <clears throat> How about the ancientest burial ground? No. No. You guys, that's where you did the rubbing at, right next door to the magnet school. Is that the one you're talking yeah. about? Yeah, across the street from the uh, multi yeah. magnet school. Well, we, we had to do a History of New London week um, for our um, summer program. Oh, a couple years and, ago. Oh, no, yeah. just last year. Yeah. Well, the little kids did it. You was at the Williams School. Um, so they went next, they, they did rubbings this summer. Well, you're not allowed to really rub because it's crimp, it's mess, but they went exploring it this summer. And let's see, but that's close by to the mm -hmm. mill. And then just down the street, there are four old buildings uh, known as Whale Oil Row on, on uh, Huntington Street. And, uh, and then you have the courthouse at the top. And Star Street. Star Street, yeah. Yeah, the entire street. <laughs> uh, we've got the Shaw Mansion. Yeah. We have the Custom House Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our own train station, which is a uh, it's not one of the oldest buildings, but it's, it's, it still has historical significance. Um, so just in this general area here, and then the Hempstead House, and I guess they call them the Hempstead Houses now, but uh, when I was a boy, the, the stone house out front was known as the Huguenot House. Um, but to coordinate a, a, a walking tour of these places, and then there's a boyhood home for Eugene O'Neill, who was... Uh, playwright who spent his childhood here in New London in the summertime. That's down on Pequot Avenue. Uh, I know that. So yeah. you got all these kind of neat little places and, and the Nathan Hill Schoolhouse right down there down by the whale's tail. So I mean I think that I mean that's kind of a little bit of a, a charge to you guys. See if you could pull that off and maybe you know I, I'd be willing to work with you to see if you could take, to do that. But I think it would be much more fun to have you guys try to take the Take the lead role there. What do you think? Do you think that's something you can handle? Maybe. Well, maybe, yeah. If I can get some people to join me. Well, I, 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 I'm confident in you. I, I'm, uh, I think that uh, um, you've got a good critical mass of people you work with between your school mm -hmm. and your school as well, which you, with the, with the center itself. Um, you could work this a couple of ways. You know, make it a school project or make it a, uh, a center project or maybe one with the school and one with the center, depending on the age group that you're working with. But I think I see wonderful opportunities here. And Thank a chance you. to learn about your community that you live in, that you grew up in. You know, a lot of our neighboring communities don't have 
historical sites? I, that's right, and we do. And it's interesting, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but I say this a little bit of tongue in cheek, mm -hmm. but uh, back in the Revolutionary War, we had our first redevelopment when Benedict Arnold came in here and burned New London down. And a lot of New London was lost. Uh, and Benedict Arnold uh, actually grew up in Norwich, and he was an American general, and he, he became a traitor, and he went over to the British. And uh, one of his treasonous acts was to come back to New London and burn it to the ground. Mm -hmm. And we had the Battle of Groton Heights across the river as well that he was... At Port Griswold? Yeah. So, you know, and, and Fort Trumbull it could be part of your tour. So, I mean, there's just all this neat I stuff. A lot of times. All this neat stuff, you know. You could do a tour, you know, on, on the Bark Eagle, too, at the Coast Guard. I mean, that's mm -hmm. another interesting thing that we have right here in New London. A lot of cool stuff. Coast Guard Academy. Conn College, where I went to school. Oh, really? Yeah. You went to a lab, please. Right? Mm -hmm. Learned economics and government. How about What's that? economics? Like business? It's... Uh, Financials? It's, it's not business. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a different discipline. Business is... I've, I've got a master's in business administration. That's learning how to run a business and make money. And uh, uh, the economy is l learning about how, how the... the and there's two types of economics. You've got macro, which is big, but you're learning about like the United States economy or the global economy and uh, policies to try to make it uh, move effectively. And then you have microeconomics, which tends to get at a smaller level and dealing with industries and smaller s sectors uh, in the economy. So but trying to develop policies to, to have uh, growth without having uh, rising prices out, out of sight, mm -hmm. as well as having uh, low unemployment. So those are your, some of the goals and objectives, of how to get there. Right now we've been having a number of years of uh, challenges in those areas. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are out of work, that's not good. But I, I like the challenge. One of the, this summer, one of the things we had was New London Week where we had to learn about different parts of New London and so forth. So this is something that we already do and I think it would be a great opportunity. So hopefully I hope you guys take that challenge because um, I think it will work cause we, because like you said, a lot of people out of work, a lot of our field trips was local things and um, different things that we can do walking distance. You have to make do with what you have. So some of the sites that you did name, we have been there. Um, and our kids have um, benefit from those different um, opportunities. But it would be nice to have like a map and where it's out there that is designed by youth for, you know, for families to think about what's available for them at free or reduced cost. Yeah. One of the things that uh, last year I had the uh, privilege and pleasure of addressing uh, all of the students at the Benny Dover Jackson Middle School, uh, the year I served as mayor, um, in small groups, in two classes at a, at a time, over a period of a couple of weeks, and discussing local government. And as part mm -hmm. of my talk, I gave a little bit of an overview and history of, of our community and it's, it's our treasures. And uh, many of the students, quite frankly, weren't aware. And I think that it's important that you're aware of your community, where you live, especially when you grow up here. I think it's a, uh, are both of you fellows familiar with the Amistad? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, the Amistad, uh, when, when they were captured, so to speak, uh, their first stop was here in New London. And they came to the Custom House Pier right here in New London before they were sent to New Haven where their trial was held. And uh, that was something that was missed by Spielberg when he did his movie. The New London was not uh, mentioned at all, but their, their first stop was, was right here in New London. And uh, you know, that, that's a you know, tremendous, tremendous story. And it's something that local kids should know about, I think, and know that New London's role in that story. And uh, you know, we don't, uh, I don't think we get that in our schools. At the, at least not enough. Well, I know Tamara Seifert um, many years ago <coughs> used to do a play about it, and she talked about it. She's not um, in this um, part of the country anymore, or the state, but um, it was a great opportunity. That was before the movie came out. 
And um, matter of fact, Benny Dover was one of the schools that she mm -hmm. had the opportunity to do that uh, particular presentation. And then she worked at um, um, Mystic Seaport, and she presented there to, so people would know what was going on during that time frame. Mm -hmm. Oh. It's so cute to see you guys here. But um, I don't know if you're aware that, um, Azelle, would you mind sharing, well, since we're talking about boating and, and so forth, he had the opportunity to go on, um, is it the, the, the mirror wall? Yeah, the mirror walls. An, oy uh, an oystering ship. Oystering? Uh, it did, it oystered around Connecticut and up in Chicago. And um, I got to do a tour, well, not a tour, but I got to sail on it. And on the boat, we hoisted sails, we, we um, cleaned the deck, and we coiled uh, the, the lines so, that, so, that, so we, that we could put them up. There's a specific way, you know, it, it's kind of difficult because they, they're very precise about the way the coil has to be shaped and how wide and tall the length of it is. And how long were you on the boat for? Five days. Five days, and you, uh, you you slept on the boat. Yes. And you ate on the boat. Yes. Neat. And I came back on Sailfest. I the day the boat arrived, we arrived on Sailfest, uh, June, July sixth. Yeah. And was July that this 6th. year or was it this year? Oh wow, that's uh, neat. You came right back in time for the fireworks. Well, oh. we saw fire. I was about to mention that. <laughs> Yeah, when we were on the boat, we saw the fireworks from like five different cities. Oh, really? <laughs> like they knew, they knew, they, they knew you were coming, huh? <laughs> five separate cities having fireworks all at the same time. It was really cool. I liked it. So did this experience give you a, a uh, desire that maybe you'd like to be on the sea, and, uh, become a captain, maybe uh, all sorts of stuff to do on the water? I mean, you could be on one of these ferry boats. Uh, Tugboats, maybe a submarine. Maybe, but um, uh, the boating trip, it was pretty fun, but I don't know. I don't think of it as a career. Yeah? Okay, well, I mean, I'm just curious. I mean, it, just being out on the water. I, I mean, growing up, it's one of the things I find interesting here in New London is that many of our young people uh, uh, don't take advantage of our proximity to the water. I mean, we're, we're right here. And, That's uh, what the city was based off of. Yeah, and, and I think yeah. that uh, it's important that you know we should all have an opportunity to get out in the water, learn to swim, if at a bare minimum for your own safety. You know, <laughs> and you're right, especially for our own safety. And this was the first year that um, Parks and Rec wasn't able to our offer swim lesson during the daytime. And I don't know if New London as a whole realized the impact of our kids not learning how to swim. Because you're right, for years, it is so exciting to watch our kids learn how to swim. Sometimes the adults, because they're afraid of swimming, they're not gonna take their kids to swim because they're afraid of the water. But one of the things that I've been so grateful to New London for is that the rec the, um, department over all those years allowed the Drop and Learning Center to bring our kids there to Ocean Beach for swim lessons. And so our kids learn how to swim throughout the years there. Then also, as our kids got um, older, our middle school kids end up going to Connecticut College for swimming. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine seeing kids, you know, when they first started to swim um, at Connecticut College, they're in the shuttle, and then by the end of the fifth week, they're diving off the high dive. Diving board, and it's so it's, it's so empowering because the kids are taking those steps to learn a skill that could save their lives and others, mm -hmm. and yeah. also careers because they can be lifeguards. Guys, yeah, I was just yeah. thinking mm -hmm. that. Yeah. When I was a teenager, I was a lifeguard at Ocean Beach. How about that? <clears throat> Believe it or not, I was a teenager once upon a time. So a long, <laughs> long time ago. Uh. Ever you know put up binoculars and look through them the wrong way, and it looks like. It's a really like, far away. Yeah. That's how far away it was when I was a lifeguard. Oh my goodness, time is going by so quick. I, I, was, I looked at the time and I was like, wow. Because I really got to talk about lights on the after school. They, they have at it. Okay. So lights on the after school <laughs> is, is a national celebration to encourage people to keep after school alive. I don't know if our community is aware that basically there's drop and learning center, 
BP Learn Mission, and then the Salvation Army. Those are like the three main after school programs. Um, and, and that's scary that in our town, we only have those three after school program, which we are restricted by licensing, which we only can have so many kids. So what I'm telling people is so important to support after school program. And this year, we're gonna be celebrating Lice on after school for three days. So we're um, October the 15th, the 16th, and the 18th. The 15th, we're gonna be celebrating the fact that all the people who volunteer and take time to be at the center, we're going to acknowledge them on the 15th on that Monday. On that Tuesday, we're going to have a, um, a, a educational forum. We're asking people to come from 12 to 1.30 to discuss about our education system. What are you going to do to help change New London? And how is good? Um, so we're looking for people to come out and just to have that really deep discussion. But I'm like, you know, I like to discuss stuff, but I like people with action. So if you come to the table, be aware that we're going to ask you to step up to the plate. And then on the 18th, just celebrating after school, what we're going to be doing is um, we're going to come down to the Wells Tail and light it up. We're going to um, have a storyteller down there and just really talk about and celebrate after school. So around the world, around the United States at least, October the 18th is celebration after school, about after school program and all the things that after school provide. And I like the term out of school because like I said, we're not just after school, we're before care, we're early release days, we're summer days, so and then we're weekends. So it's important to know that out of school time is something that everyone should be supporting because each child should have an opportunity to learn different things with their peers, but Parents need to know that they have a safe place to grow, learn, and we're asking you guys to support after-school programming. Sounds like a plan to me. Sounds like a plan. What do you think, guys? <laughs> well, I agree with Miss D because Miss D has helped me come a long way. You know, I'm I'm here. You know, and Miss D helped me do this, and she's always had my back. She's always telling me not to miss out on opportunities, mm -hmm. and she's right. And well, I, I've been duly impressed with you young men this evening cry, that you would I'm not crying. come up right here on, on, the, on, the, on the TV. You're cool, calm, collect. You've been handling yourself well. And there are people out there watching the program. We haven't had any phone calls tonight. I know. What's going on? I uh, put it on Facebook. I told everybody to call. I have it on at the center. <laughs> I'm like, call. But, but I, I, I'll tell you this, guys, because this, this is the truth. And I happen to see this young lady up at the Connecticut Sun Games on a pretty regular basis. But uh, that's not my point. My point is, I, a couple of weeks ago, I was leaving the, the game up at the casino, and I get on the elevator, and I get back to my car, and this guy says to me, I know you, you're on TV. I, I've never seen this guy before. He says, you don't know me, because I live in Plainfield. Mm -hmm. So what the heck's Plainfield? She goes, well, I like your show. So there's a guy in Plainfield who's probably watching us tonight <clears throat> who goes to Connecticut Sun Games. Okay. So, so you got good taste. Uh, <laughs> and, and I do know from, from, you know, hiking around town from time to time that people will, will point out that they watch the program, whether they sit and watch an hour or they're in between commercials or whatever, mm -hmm. but they're... Uh, tuning in and they're interested in what's going on and uh, I think that tonight's discussion has been enlightening getting your perspective on school and the center and uh, where you're going and how you're getting from point A to point B. Uh, and often my discussions tend to be political about New London and this has been I think a very refreshing uh, change of pace here to, to mm. get the perspective uh, of our young folks here and your achievements and your successes. And, I like it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Gives me hope. Gives us all hope that, mm -hmm. uh, that the younger generation will be ready to take take control when it's when it's your turn. You'll be ready to go, and that's important. We have to have, uh, have some confidence. <clears throat> well, we're getting down to our last uh, five minutes or so, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, as noted, we haven't had any calls tonight. And I really would uh, love to get somebody to kind of call in and inquire yeah. of our guests. Uh, about their experiences, and uh, as I speak, we have a, a call uh -oh. coming in. Awesome. Yeah. Good evening, and you're on the air. Hi, how are you? 
Good. How are you? Good. Good. I was just exercising and watching a, watching the program, and uh, and I want to hand it to these young guys for coming on and and uh, presenting like this. It takes a lot of courage when you're young, and uh, builds poise, character, confidence, and the work that I caught talking about uh, historical sites and maybe bring together some information for community members, family members to to follow and. Uh, it's a great idea because a lot of schools are cutting back on field trips and trips to historical sites because of budget constraints. And uh, uh, also with history, a lot of times it takes a hit uh, because of science, technology, but and uh, but it's really really important to our lives and clearly important to these young fellows. And uh, I commend them. They they they're they're doing the right thing and. Uh, I uh, congratulate them. Keep up the good work. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much Thank for the call. You. Thank you. Oh, my God. Oh, there you go. So we had our first call for the night, and that was a nice, positive, uh, upbeat uh, that, that really was. observation. So thank you to the caller for sharing uh, your thoughts. Um, <clears throat> as we're getting into our, our closing moments, is there anything that you'd like to kind of share about your experience here this evening? I mean, are you... Yeah, you gung ho. You want to come back? We can have you back sometime. And sure. Have another yes. program here. Yes. Sure. Yes. What about yes. you, young lady? Of course, I would love to come. All right, back. we'll have to we'll have to schedule that in here. I think that you guys uh, would make for another uh, another good program. Maybe we can find another topic we can hone in on and uh, uh, mm -hmm. maybe take some experience, or if we are able to pull off this uh, historical tour, we can maybe develop a program around around how how that works from step A, getting it organized. Uh, bringing it right through to conclusion. Mm -hmm. So give us a little something of a target to try to develop that and make it work. I like that idea. And uh, what about with the, uh, with the centers? Anything you'd like to kind of, in our remaining moments, uh, perhaps tap into that we haven't gotten into this evening oh, yet? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for um, just allowing us to come down here to be able to talk about what we do at the um, at the Drop and Learning Center. And the main thing is that I'm always looking for volunteers and Really, I want the people to know that we're here in the community, and if you are an alumni of the Drop and Learning Center, please call us, 860-442-4466. We're trying to build our alumni base, and it's so important so you know what's going on. And, and I like to hear those stories about if the drop made a difference in your life. I think that's important for, um, for us to know about so we could continue on the legacy. And thank you again. I'd like to say something. Sure. Just earlier, a couple of, in school, a couple of my friends were, you know, like, ah, I used to go to the drop. I left there when I was, like, in sixth grade. But you know what? They're not doing this, so. Mm. How about that? You just got an opportunity and you jumped on it, and we're uh, delighted to have you guys on. Uh, I, I've really enjoyed the program this evening, and you guys have, uh, have been really, uh, like I say, I, I'm excited for you and about you, and I think that... Uh, what you've developed between your home and school and the drop-in learning center, uh, you're getting a good solid background here so that you get kind of on that right path in life and uh, I think that's exciting and Riona it's always a pleasure to have a chance to talk to you about what you're doing and uh, you're a good mentor for all these young folks. And with that ladies and gentlemen we're uh, kind of winding down and out of time so I want to thank you for coming on uh, and watching City Focus this evening. Uh, next week, we'll be moving for the next quarter to a new day and time. We'll be on Tuesday at 6 o'clock for uh, October, November, and December. So please look for us at our new day and time, and I'll be posting that on Facebook as well as on uh, New London Patch. And with that, with my guests, thank you for coming on. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, good night. Okay. Good night. Good night.